Welcome to the tip channel. That is perfection. Today we're going to take a look at, at installing a new electric tankless hot water unit. Now, to give you an understanding of how these units work, basically they're rated on gallons per minute. What that means is how many gallons per minute they will be able to produce. Uh, you will start out with a unit that's called a point of use. Now the point of use will actually go underneath of the sink base. You plug it into a 110 outlet, hook up your plumbing, and you're done. So fairly easy on the installation. Next up from that, you will get into a 220 unit. And a 220 unit will have a single heating element in it. And you would require a double pole 40 or a double pole 60 in your panel box in order to power that unit. Next up from there, you get into a double heating element. And the double heating element will require two double pole 40s or double pole 60s in your panel box. Um, they also make a three element unit. Now, some of the re three element units, they suggest that you have a 400 amp service. Most people don't have a 400 amp service in their house. They typically, if it's a new installation on their panel box, it's probably going to be a 200 amp. So the three units, can you pull it off with a 200? You'd almost have to check with the manufacturers. The unit that we're going to use today has two heating elements in it. So we'll be running two circuits back to the panel box. Uh, our unit is requiring 40 amps. So we'll be using a number eight wire back to the panel box. Now, I'm about 15 feet away from the panel box. I'm in my garage area. I haven't chosen that location because of the electric. I've chosen it because where the sink is at that I want to have hot water instantly. Our situation is that I have three quarter inch copper through the house. And to get to the location of where I'm standing at right now, we're looking at about 50 feet of three quarter inch copper. So it takes forever to get hot water up here. So I'm going to mount the unit here in my garage. Now my garage is heated, so we don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to mount it here. It's very close to my sink. Right above me is the sink. I've got a shower located about 10 feet away, and uh, I will hook the shower to it as well. Now, here's the situation with the electric units. They're going to be able to push out X amount of gallons per minute. Um, the unit that we have is going to be great for showers. It's going to be great for sinks. The situation is if you have a bathtub and you turn the bathtub on full blast, it's going to exceed the gallons per minute that the unit's going to be able to push out. So what you have to do is you've got to adjust your faucet back on the bathtub to get to that flow rate that matches your unit that it's able to produce. Um, I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but... Uh, we're going to take you through this step by step, and like I said, fairly easy in regards to installation. I put in a lot of these. Uh, I am a uh, electrician, so the electrical part's not a problem for me. If you're not, definitely I would suggest hiring an electrician for the electrical part. We are getting ready to start our electrical. And as you can see, basically the hookup is that here we are for the first element, and down here we are for the second element. Now, you can see that we have one grounding lug and that's coming out and going to ground. Now, what this is, this is called an equipment ground, meaning that our unit's not using 110, it's only using 220. So this is an equipment ground, which just simply keeps people from being shocked. Uh, what that means in regards to our wiring is that if they were using two hots and a neutral, then the neutral would have been used for something 110 in the unit, and we would need to run a four wire. It would have two hot wires, it would have a neutral, and it would have a ground. In our case, our unit does not use the neutral, so all we need is a three wire coming from the panel box. We have our two wires ran from the panel box over and we're getting ready to hook this up. Now, a couple of different things. This unit's requiring 40 amp breakers. We're using a number eight wire. So it's referred to as an eight two with ground. What that means is it has two conductors and then it has a ground wire. Now, 
This is good for the 40 amp breakers that we're going to use with one exception. If you were going to be 75, 100 feet away from the panel box in regards to wire, you might want to upgrade this to number six because of the amperage drop. But basically what you have is you have a black wire and a white wire. Now, both of these are hot, so it doesn't matter which terminal you put them on. This is going to have 110 volts on it. This is going to have 110 volts on it. Between the two, it makes the 220. Uh, this naturally is our equipment ground. We have our electric hooked up to the hot water tank heater. And this is what I was trying to explain. You can see that on the one block, I've got the white on the right and the black on the left. Right down below that, I've got just the opposite. I've got the white on the left, black on the right. As I mentioned, it doesn't matter. Um, basically, they're both hot wires. And then we have the equipment grounds going underneath of the equipment ground block. So this port here is ready to go. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention, do me a small favor. Uh, I've left like a, an additional foot of wire up in the ceiling. If this unit ever goes bad, this electrician needs to change this. He'll be able to pull some additional wire if need be. Um, but think about the next guy. We're over at our panel box now, ready to make our tie-in uh, for our tankless heater. Now, I remember going back to my teenage years and going to school for electrical. And my teacher at that time said, the first rule of electricity is this. Don't be scared of electricity, but respect the shit out of it. Sorry about the cuss words. Anyways, if you're planning on doing your own electrical, very first thing, everything right now in this panel box is live. If I touch this breaker, I touch this breaker. If I touch this bus bar, I'm going to get shocked. So main breaker, that's the big one up at the top. Shut the main breaker off. Have somebody hold a flashlight. What that means is these two wires up here at the top coming into that main breaker, they're still hot. Everything underneath of that is dead, so you don't have to worry about getting shocked. Now, I've got to take you in for a close-up to explain the wiring of these wires into the panel box. Okay, so a close-up view. What we're looking at, as you can see, this one right here is a double 50. And you can see we have the black and white wire going onto the breaker. So in our case, we're going to have two of these double 40s. And that's what we're looking for. The black and white are going to go onto the breaker. Now, here's the thing. This panel box that we're looking at was done approximately 35 years ago. So if your panel box is that old, what you're going to find is both the neutral and ground wires are going into the same block. This was before the code change where the neutrals had to be kept separate from the ground. So you may have this scenario with a mixture of neutrals and ground, or you may see one block that has all ground wires on, and you'll see another block that has all neutral wires on. If the wiring in your panel box is like that, the last wire, the ground wire, you want to go into the block that has the ground wires on. If your panel box is like this one, which has a mixture of neutrals and ground, you can put it into either of the two blocks because these two blocks are actually tied together by the bus bar. We have completed the electrical uh, in our panel box. We've got a three quarter inch Romex connector coming on down and yes, I zip tie everything. I uh, believe by that rule, think about the next guy. Uh, anyways, we're coming down and we're tied into two 40 amp breakers. Uh, as I mentioned, white and black going on the breakers, the bare wire going into the uh, ground block. Just to clear this up, uh, didn't want you to get confused in regards to the white and black wire being on the breaker and me mentioning the fact about the neutrals and ground wires being on the same block. Now, when it comes to 110, your black wires are hot and your white wires are neutral. In our case with the 220, both the white and black are hots. And then we just have an equipment ground going to the uh, grounding block. 
getting ready to start our plumbing and um, don't get me wrong I love to sweat copper but we'll be using PEX and seriously since they came out with the PEX product you could teach a five-year-old how to do this so very simple now for cutting it they make a cutter and uh, very easy basically cuts like butter um, in regards to the crimps there's two different styles of crimps there is a metal crimp that goes on the pipe and you have a jaw that goes around it in crimps now the crimps that I use are stainless steel I do prefer those because as you know stainless is going to have a lot less chance of rusting now fittings I use brass fittings they do make this in plastic I'm not a fan of plastic fittings I use brass Basically, the way that this works is you simply take your crimp ring, put it around it, put your fitting in. You take your crimping tool. There's two little places to grab a hold of the crimp. You grab a hold of the crimp and squeeze. And it's just that simple. You just made a joint. Now, you'll know the weird thing about this. After you've done this, you can actually take and turn this fitting. Can you pick that up? And it doesn't leak. How's that possible? Now, the other thing that we'll be using today is shark bites. And the shark bites, you don't need crimps. Basically what they are, they work with copper, they work with PEX. So if you're starting out with copper and you're switching to PEX, naturally a shark bite fitting works great because it'll work on copper, it'll work on PEX. The way that these work is, first of all, I know that this is going to go down inside this fitting approximately an inch. So what I normally do, just to be on the safe side, is I take a marker and I put a little mark about one inch down. And then basically all you do is you push it together. Now, you can see that my mark is right down there. So I know that I'm all the way in, no questions about it. Now, this is also a forgiving product, meaning that if you made a mistake on which end you put the pipe in or what have you, there's a little plastic tool, I keep it in my bag, slips over the pipe, you push down on this little ring, and it releases this so you can take it back out again. So it's forgiving if you don't get it quite at the right place. Now, I am a little overkill in regards to valves. Here's what I'm going to do. Now, actually, I'm going to have a couple shutoff valves here, which will shut down this system. So that if anything happens, I can isolate this and just shut that down and my house is still good. I'm going to go another step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my hot water tank. So what I'm going to do up underneath of my sink is I'm going to run my water line up there. I'm going to leave the valve that I have into place now that shuts the water off going to the faucet. And then I'm going to put a T in right above that. And I'm going to put a new valve coming in from my tankless hot water. Now, the advantage to me doing that is that if something happens to the tankless, I just simply shut that valve off, turn my other valve on, and I'm still good. I'll be using my hot water tank. Now, think about this. If my, if my hot water tank goes, what do I do? Well... I've got two valves set up underneath of this sink. All I have to simply do, I open up the one valve coming from my tankless. I open up my other valve that goes to my hot water tank. I go down into the basement, shut my valves off on my hot water tank. Now my tankless is supplying my entire house. So either unit goes down, there's two valves upstairs, keeps me moving. We've completed our plumbing, as you can see. Uh, we've got our valve set, everything is hooked up upstairs, water's back on, no leaks. With the PEX, you might as well say you're not going to have any leaks. That and the monster tape too. I did forget to mention, in regards to your Teflon tape, you want to turn it the same way that you're putting your fitting on. So in other words, looking at the bottom of that fitting, that would be going on in a clockwise direction. Um, these are our threaded fittings, so if I have an issue, I can unscrew this from the unit. These are also shark bites, so very easily I can disconnect the shark bite as well if I need to service the unit. Now we've got the cover back on and we're ready to flip on the breaker 
We've completed our install, breakers on, went upstairs, everything is working fantastic. Wife says she's going to bake me an apple pie. We'll see. Uh, I purchased this unit off of Amazon. It is called Air The Real. Um, does have digital readout on it. Um, whenever you're not using it in water, it says standby. When you're heating water, uh, it says heating. I'm able to uh, adjust the temperature that I want on my water anywhere from 100 to about 130 degrees. So uh, a real nice feature. I do like the digital readout on it. Uh, no leaks on anything. Power's on. Wife's happy. Can't ask for anything more than that. How did our project turn out? This is the tip channel. That is perfection. I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please like and subscribe and have a great day.